How many of you clap? How many of you know what chat GBT is? There are things, and everyone on, in the audience should know this, there are things coming down the pipeline on the artificial intelligence front that are just gonna make your hair stand on end within the next year. Because there is so much transformation going on in that domain. And, and that's been the case, particularly for the last six months, that it's, it's almost unimaginable. I figure a third of the universities will go broke in the next five years. So I'll tell you what chat GPT is, just so you know, because you need to know this. And I don't know what sort of technological revolution this is. It's smarter than you. This is a big deal. So this AI system, it's a general language processing model, was released about a week ago, a week and a half ago. And uh, I, I went and interacted with it. You can, it's an AI system, artificial intelligence system. It basically is trained on, well, a massive corpus of, of spoken and, or of text. So it's derived its models of the world from the analysis of human speech, essentially. It, it isn't using real world data yet, but that will be happening certainly within the next year. And ChatGPT analyzes a very large corpus of text, and that corpus is growing all the time. Now, it's already sophisticated enough. I went on to it last week and I said, okay, some of you know I, I've written these books, 12 Rules for Life, and then Beyond Order, 12 more rules, because, you know, you can't have enough rules. And I asked it, this is what I asked it to do. I said, write me an essay that's a 13th rule for Beyond Order, written in a style that combines the King James Bible with the Tao Te Ching. That's pretty difficult to pull off, you know? Any one of those things is hard. The intersection of all three, that's impossible. Well, it wrote it in about three seconds, four pages long, and it isn't obvious to me, for better or worse, that I would be able to tell that I didn't write it. Right, right, and okay, and that's pretty impressive, but the fact that it could do that grammatically perfectly, right, and quite impressive philosophically, I also had it write an essay on the intersection between the Taoist version of ethical morality and the ethics that are outlined in the Sermon on the Mount, which it just nailed, got that dead right, br brilliant. Again, it took it about three seconds. There was a, a computer engineer who purported to work for Tesla. He asked GPT, chat GPT, he said, look, I work for Elon Musk, but I haven't been doing much for the last week, so I need you to write me 10 bullet points about what I probably would have done as a, as a engineer at Twitter, what 10 things did I do last week that were productive and valuable? And, oh, if you don't mind, write me the accompanying computer code that goes with each project. And it did that too, three seconds, and the computer code works. Right, and so, okay, so that's, that's already there. So then a university professor did this. He thought, oh, that's interesting. Any student will be able to write any essay on any topic with chat GPT. And, uh, Someone gave it an SAT, by the way, and it scored about as well as the average student in a well-functioning public university. So that's how smart it is. So that's basically an IQ test. He said, write me an essay, gave it a topic, wrote the essay. He said, now grade it. He said, if we can automate the students, we should be able to automate the professors too. And so it provided a complete comprehensive analysis of its own essay with grade. It wrote a... Someone else asked it, write the screenplay and describe the characters for the next $900 million Hollywood blockbuster. It's like, bang, plot, characterizations. Then someone else took the descriptions of the actors and said, generate computer, photorealistic computer images for each actor. And all the AI systems could do that. So I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen next. This is gonna happen this year, so get ready. Okay, so now we have an AI model that can extract a model of the world from the entire corpus of language. All right, and it's, it's smarter than you. And it's gonna be a hell of a lot smarter than you in two years. So you can get ready for that too. But it's not that smart yet because it's just a humanities professor at the moment. It doesn't test its linguistic knowledge against the real world. 
That's what a scientist does, right? You come up with a theory that's linguistically predicated and then you throw it against the world and see if it sticks. And then the world tells you whether or not your linguistic construction is valid. But the new AI systems will be able to extract out patterns from the world itself, from images and so forth, and then be able to test their linguistic constructions against the world, and so they'll practice just like scientists. And the most advanced models are going to use text and image and action as well, because they'll be able to model human action. And so, and all of that's going to come down the pipes within the next year. So hang on to your hats, ladies and gentlemen, because what did my friend Jonathan Pajot say? Giants are going to walk the earth once more. And we're going to live through that. And Elon Musk, one of the things he's working on, see, he, he thinks that the world will be controlled by whoever produces the most functional AI system the fastest, because there'll be a first mover advantage. And one of the things Musk has been working on for a long time are distributed AI systems, so that you'll have your own artificial intelligence to protect you against, well, let's say against Google's artificial intelligence, for starters. Yeah, or, or the CCP's artificial intelligence, because you can bet your hat they're working on that about as fast as they possibly can.